Let's see. Mimics don't shine like the normal chests do. Helps with them. Oh. That is actually really helpful. Thank you. The bosses are kind of underwhelming. I liked the idea. I like the idea of them, but they're just kind of orbs. The boss on the last level wasn't bad. Ow. Guess I deserve that for getting greedy. Okay. So far, so good. Let's see. Does Wanda like this game? It's alright. I think my problem is, like, it doesn't do quite enough to stand out. I, I've, I've been having this problem a lot lately. Where it's like, here's this... Ow, shit. Uh, here's this cool new roguelike. Okay, let's load it up. Let's let's try it out. See if it's any good. Oh wow. Uh, cool new roguelike. Load it up. Try it out. See if it's any good. Uh, and the answer is like, and I know this is unfair, but many of them follow very similar formulas and rarely. Oh, that is. Uh. That is an evil one. Okay. Grab this. Yeah, every enemy here ex explodes. Uh. And can just lob shot from wherever the hell they want. Okay. Uh. I guess it's just kind of more of the same syndrome. There's a lot of games that kind of just fall into that category, and I feel bad because, like, it's not... It's not bad. It's just... In a total vacuum, this game would be pretty good. In a universe where Nuclear Throne exists, or Gungeon exists, it's okay. You know, the level design is... Uh, nuclear Throne-ish, but without, like, all the destruction. You can destroy some blocks, but not all of them. Whereas, like, there's something really satisfying about just, like, blasting through a wall in Nuclear Throne. And, or having an enemy just chew through a wall to get at you. And stuff, if that makes sense. Um. Let's see. But... Yeah, I, I guess it really just boils down to... There are so many other equally competent roguelikes that do almost the same thing that it's hard for me to recommend this specific one over the ones that have a little bit more pedigree and content to them. If you're looking for more of the same, but a slightly different flavor, I'd say this is pretty good. But... It's not going to be anything, uh, anything that I'd say, like, drop Gungeon, play this game. Which is, you know, unfortunate because, uh, most people are just going to be perfectly satisfied with Gungeon. I don't think that's a bad thing. I guess, uh, what's, a, what's an easy comparison, uh, for something in the same classification? I have not used my light, lightning rifle in forever and it's still out of ammo. That is rough. Uh, but an easy comparison between this game and another would actually be Atomicrops. Atomicrops is early access, admittedly, which is not... Uh, which is kind of rough for me in a kind of different light, because no matter how good an early access game is, they're inherently limited in, you know, what you can do in them. And you're gonna have to wait a while before they're actually, like, worth something. Uh, but, like, Atomicrops very much is in the exact same category of uh, randomly generated weapons, uh, somewhat randomly generated worlds, just lots of bullets flying on the screen, but 
inherently just the the combination of the farm mechanics makes atomic crops that much more interesting. Uh, let's see, because that's something that's something to spice the gameplay up to to set it apart from just like another Isaac-ish thing. Because this is honestly very, very similar to another another game uh, beyond just Gungeon and nu Nuclear Throne that I played recently, uh, specifically called... Oh, these guys are just regular enemies now, aren't they? Looks like it. I'm about to run out of ammo. I really want to replace the lightning gun with something a little bit oomphier, but I'm not having a whole lot of luck there. You are... Oh, you're not evil. Okay, Flame Pistol. Let's try Flame Pistol over Poison Pistol. I don't know how it's gonna go, but it can't be much different. Okay, so... Slightly more damage has a burn effect. Maybe no AoE? No, no. It seems to leave a burning patch on the ground that... We'll get enemies. I like I like the status effects. That part's pretty fun. I think the poison actually might be better though. Cause I think you can't multi yeah, you can't multi burn a thing, whereas the poison uh the poison stacks up. Ow. Why did I do why did I just stand there? Well, everything just exploded. It'd be nice if I could actually see the uh, the pure statistics on on these things. Yeah, because the flame pistol might do more damage on like a here and there shot, but I think the poison pistol is just slightly better. Very hard to tell. Very hard to. I don't know. Breakdown? Question mark? Oh boy. Welcome to Wave Defense. It's gonna be the next one. Uh, but yeah, so Blazing Beaks. Very similar kind of style. Smaller, and had kind of an interesting twist on... Uh... Penalties? Question mark? Because Blazing Beaks was one of those where you... Uh, every time you found an item, it was cursed. And... Uh... You would take the cursed items into the, the shop, and it, they get uncursed, so there's kind of a penalty system. It made for rather interesting gameplay, because you, you had to consider what you were going to do. Dash deals damage to enemies, I don't like that. Vulnerable after taking damage, or melee freezes the enemy. All of these suck. I'm gonna do dash deals damage. Even though I'm not gonna use it, probably it seems arguably more helpful. Okay, that looks like a fun gun. Unfortunately, I'm kind of swamped in dudes. Ow. Yeah, just a little bit too much bullet hell for me. I'm not very I'm not very good at dodging like swarms like that. Heavy grenade launcher. Uh yeah, let's grab that instead of the electric SMG. I like the idea of the electric SMG. It just doesn't... Oh. This might have been a mistake. The heavy SMG... For some ungodly reason... Fires three. I think that's the only thing that sets it apart, is just the rapid fire. Which feels very strange. I'm just gonna go back to the lightning gun. Maybe? I don't know. No, it definitely made short work of that crowd. So I'll give it, I'll give it more credit where credit is actually due. 
I just would prefer it if it had like a bigger nade. Oh! So now we got these guys. Which means I ain't gonna know where half of my enemies are. Ugh, shit. Well, this is an altogether terrible idea of a location. I'm just gonna try and grab what I can. Mainly, I want them to all spawn behind me so I can just wrap them in. Yeah, and kill them. Biggest travesty out of a lot of this. I wonder if you can get them to friendly fire each other. On the plus side, there is no... Eh, level cleared. That was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. On the plus side, there's no contact damage for anything other than spiky enemies, which I really love. Okay, so what do we got here? Ricochet rifle. Uh, yeah. I wish I knew how much damage it did, but ricochet rifle sounds a little bit more... Oh. Nope. Uses the same ammo as my poison. Let's see, I'm the only one that gets lost when water lists off games is example. I just don't know a lot of the games he references. And that's kind of okay. I mean, I play I play a shit ton of video games constantly. And so uh So it's kind of one of those where it's like, yeah. I don't really expect people to know every game I'm talking about. Uh, feel free to Google them. Uh, I try and describe them as I go along. Uh, but, I don't know, I just... The more video games I play, the more, like, points of reference I can use as kind of a comparison. I think that's actually a really useful thing, especially when talking about games like this. And why, on some base level, there's, there's an issue with them. I'm not gonna say that this game is inherently bad, just... It's so many other games like this. Uh... Because I think I've already listed, what, seven different examples, give or take? And I've got, like, more. The wild thing is, I'm only listing the ones that I've played I know about and I even remember. Oh god, you have to upgrade this one too? I kinda wish this would carry over at the very least, because I don't think it's worth upgrading anything here. Oh! I don't know what that is. I can't interact with it, though, which is kind of unfortunate. <sighs> so what does this say? Dear... Okay, message from the administration. Dear colonists, we wish to remind you that it's strictly forbidden to take dust from any minerals mined with you after your shift. Any such behavior will be punished, may result in your banishment from the colony. We understand that even a fraction of a gram could set you up for life. But we're paying you good money as it is. Rest assured that our security systems will not allow any forbidden materials to be smuggled outside the colony. By breaking the law, you're only creating problems for yourself. Thank you for understanding. Have a nice day. Can't break it? No. It didn't seem to... It didn't seem to be interactable at all. Um. Anyway. Uh. But. I think this is actually like a bit of a... Oh boy. Everything is sniping now. I need something with a bit more range to it. And a bit more damage. At least these guys don't explode when they die. Dang, Mimics. At least they don't have that much HP. And they're relatively easy to dodge. Okay, not so bad yet. I don't like high-speed projectile enemies. At least they're... Ow relatively easy to kill. You just kind of have to zigzag. Ow! Come on! I really wanted to know what was in one of those. Alright, fine. Okay. 
damn it. Whoop. SMG. Really? Here? Yeah, I don't really like high uh, high velocity projectile enemies either. It feels weird and wrong. Oh boy. I guess it doesn't feel weird and wrong. It's just one of those where it's like, I don't like going toe to toe with them, which means I have to play like really bad hit and run tactics, which makes me feel like I'm playing Mass Effect again, which just makes me mad. Um, but yeah, no, we, we have kind of this problem uh, in the games industry. I'm gonna say we, I'm not even sure what exploded in my face, honestly. I probably just got shot by one of the sniper dudes. Ow. Well. I'm, I'm just starting to get shot here. Which of these guys would drop HP pickups occasionally. And the sniper enemies are especially bad at nighttime. Oh, it's okay. Now that... It, I'm awake, alert, and... Whoops. That is the upgrades. I almost kind of prefer the uh, nuclear throne variety. God damn it. I really want to know what's in one of those. Like, why are there golden chests all over the place? Okay, well, what do we got? Magnet from Jupiter. Ow! I didn't even notice the sniper there. I'm really not a big fan of this heavy grenade launcher. I want to replace it with something a little bit more exciting. But it's the only thing I got. Seriously, you could have had a much bigger boom. It just feels like weird overkill to just chuck it down that in hopes of killing an enemy. Lot of ammo and we're good but yeah no i never never feel like you need to know and understand every game that i have like on my polls or even that i'm talking about there's just too many games for that uh just i don't know hang out see what looks good because there are so many games that look good and i will be the one that goes through all the hard work of figuring out what exists, which is which is worth picking up. And you guys can just sit back and, you know, I guess be choosy as a result, question mark? Uh, let's go up here. I know this area is safe-ish. I don't actually know if these guys have an attack. I don't know if I've ever gotten hit by them. Not really a situation where I want to test that. A hit and I'm dead. Okay, we good? We good. Okay, we get some amount of ammo, which is fine. Okay. Yeah, so these guys are just basic enemies at this point. I guess it takes them a little while. Okay, and we're not dead yet. I like the fact that the level clear gives you at least an HP kit. That's kind of a nice trade-off. Uh. I'm still a little bit 
bothered by the fact that it just gave me an SMG. This is not... Like, you only generally get one weapon per level, and so getting an uh, SMG here just feels kind of insulting. It's not so bad, but it's just like, ugh, come on, I made it all this all this way. Give me something a little bit more exciting. I had an electric SMG earlier, for crying out loud. I have no idea what these guys have. Thanks for that tip about the, uh, the Mimics not having the shine. That is actually incredibly helpful. Oh, good. I'm better off with the poison. If I'm just constantly moving around, I don't think he can hit me. I wonder if I can get him to hit himself. Yeah, he, like, kind of tries to predict where I am, but every once in a while he just gets it wildly wrong. Weird. Okay. Change tactics. Honestly, I would say the... The main draw that this game has, truly, is how good the soundtrack is. Oh! Damn it. Well, that's fine. See, is there a way to recycle the guns you don't want? Not that I know of, no. Well, I guess I'll just toss my power in. Let's see, might be time to switch games. Sounds like you're getting frustrated more than having fun. Yep, I just didn't want to sink the run for no good reason. I apologize for being mildly critical of this game. It's just one of those where it's like, it does suck to like find a new roguelike and be like, hey, cool, roguelikes. Okay, so we can get in here now. Uh, let's see, so I can plant a tomato, I can plant peas, and I can plant this. What does this do? Allows you to see more crystals, creates a random perk, and pr protection from crystal balls. Oh! Melee attack creates a fan of bullets. Okay. This is better. So... Yeah, that, this helps. I will say, I wish the farming was a little bit more in-depth, because it looks like you just put in different seeds and they give you different effects, and it'd be kind of interesting if I had a little bit more micromanagement of it. But just walking in here and seeing this actually does really help a lot. I don't think any of this would really offset my, my grumpage about, like, some of the design choices and the fact that, yeah, even... Like, even with these little bits, it's still Nuclear Throne with a different coat of paint. Um, and even Nuclear Throne was not an original concept, because it's just based off of, what, Smash TV? Uh, that said, having these little systems and the progression systems around do go a long way to making things a lot more fun and a lot more interesting. Uh, so I'll give them credit on that one. And it's honestly a gigantic shame that you have to do, what, three, four runs before you even unlock the garden? I feel like the garden is the first thing that you should unlock. Hell, you should even unlock the garden before your first run is just kind of a, like, hey, here's a kind of a fun, interesting thing. And it would be nice if you could save up some, like, other rare seeds or, like, even make meals or something that, that creates specific bonuses. Uh, so you could fine-tune a run or, like, get some really powerful gun really early on so you can just, like, roll through stuff. Uh, but I will give credit, because this is actually a really good way of, uh, of approaching a problem that a lot of roguelikes have. Which is specifically, starting over freaking sucks. You know, how many, how many times have you finished an absolutely, like, beast run of Isaac, Gungeon, Risk of Rain, whatever. You know, you have all these upgrades, you're insanely powerful, and then you die. And then you're like, well, I don't really want to do another run like this because I'm I'm stuck being garbage man. 
And so, yeah, coming back here and planting three seeds and getting three interesting things out of this uh, that I can play around with. You know, the, the three the three orb shield and the... I mean, this in and of itself is pretty rad. I don't know how much damage it does. Uh, but this helps a lot. And so a lot of games do just meta progression, you know, but uh, not by of Isaac. Uh, Rogue Legacy, for example. Uh, Rogue Legacy, every time you die, you get new upgrades, you get stronger. So it makes each subsequent run feel better. It also is one of those where Rogue Legacy is a very, very specifically balanced game. Balanced-ish. Because your core gameplay rarely changes moment to moment. Because you don't pick up any upgrades, you're just increasing your statistics. Uh, whereas, like, Binding of Isaac, for example, going from, like, a Ludovico Brimstone situation to just basic tears again is just like, man, screw this, I don't want to play anymore for a while. And that's okay, but this is a, this is a very good way of, of changing it up, so you actually have a couple of fun perks to screw around with. And I know Isaac has meta progression where you unlock new things, but you don't get access to them until you are, like, midway through the run. Whereas starting with this one, I actually have a couple of things that I can play around with immediately. I have no real control over what they're going to be, but it, it makes starting over actually suddenly very tempting. I don't think I'm going to go... Uh, I, I don't think I'm going to do so because time and other roguelikes and, you know, honestly, no matter how cool this is, I, we'll see how it goes. Um, let's see, making Isaac start with the D6 thing. That is true. And there are ways that Isaac gets around it, but even then, like, there's no coming off of a Ludovico Brimstone run and being like, I just want to shoot regular tiers again. Boring, old, basic damage tiers, if that makes sense. Um, and so, yeah, having this with the couple random perks to start with actually really does go a long way. And so I got to give him major props for that, because that helps. I just wish they had done more like this, because honestly, like... This was creative, and it would be, it would be cool to see them take it further, and you know really stand apart. Because yeah, it's kind of hard to escape the shadow of the predecessors, and kind of no matter what you do with a lot of indie games, like you're just kind of stuck with that. I don't know. Anyway, so I guess with this, I'm gonna just leave it off for now. I might come back more if uh, people want more. Uh, but, you know, maybe I'll just throw it on the roguelike roulette at some point and do a couple more runs. Because, oh, okay, I got to use this for like two seconds. I got it. I just want to see how powerful the uh, the orbs are. Orb! Okay. In, it's, it's kind of rad. It's going to get me killed. Mainly because of those explodey things. I know I'm suppo not supposed to use them. It's also nice to see that my uh, purple purple orbs don't just get immediately wiped off the uh, planet. But yeah, this is also kind of handy from a perspective of... Oh, I wonder I wonder if uh, wrench perks apply to this. Because if wrench perks applied, oh boy. Also, it does look like... My, or my purple orbs do get deleted, but it's a temporary deal. I might as well heal. I'm just I'm just going all in. I'm gonna die. I I have just kind of accepted this. And that's fine by me. But how goof can I go? But yeah. There is a lesson to be learned from this. Uh which is I mean, lesson to be learned? No, lesson to be learned would would be implying that this game did stuff wrong. And it didn't. Uh it's mostly, I think, just market saturation that's that makes this kind of thing harder to get, like, far into, question mark? I don't know. These purple orbs are doing work. I should be dead. I am not, and it's hilarious. And there I go. <laughs> um, but yeah, this stuff, keep it up, because this is really cool. Yeah, see more crystals. So, actually, it looks like... I gotta go back. So, are the orange and the... So, it looks like the orange and the apple are always there. So, you'll always have the orbs and you will always have the apples. But the random perk ones are rare drop. And it's a shame we didn't see any of the uh, the pets. Because the pets are supposed to be a big part of this game. And are actually kind of cool, but... Well, anyway. So, like I was saying earlier, 
thank you so much for watching. This is kind of a neat game. Uh, it's a competent nuclear throne like. I just, I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.